Well, have you ever heard of the Joro spider? If you haven't, you will soon. As the East Coast braces for a surge of the invasive flying arachnids, the species is native to East Asia and were first spotted in Georgia in 2014. They have distinct yellow and dark blue abdomens with long black legs. The females are larger than the males. And David Coyle joins me now. He's an assistant professor of forest health and invasive species at Clemson University. Thanks for being with us. So the very first question everyone wants to know, are these spiders actually dangerous to human or dangerous to our pets? They are not dangerous. We've got zero evidence that they're going to be dangerous. Uh, I've known one person that's been bitten, and it's akin to a mosquito bite. A little bit of redness, a little bit of swelling, more irritating than anything. Uh, they're pretty docile. I've handled them dozens of times. My kids have handled them. They are not an aggressive type of spider that's out to get you. Well, how did they even get here? Because they're not native to this area. That's right. Our best guess is they probably just hitchhiked over on cargo containers. We've got a lot of stuff that comes into the Port of Savannah here in Georgia, and it likely made its way up just on cargo containers. And, you know, like you mentioned, we first found it in 2014. It probably got here a few years earlier. I would say around 2020 or 2021 is when populations really started kind of exploding across North Georgia and South Carolina. So, again, our best guess is it just hitchhiked its way over here. And we understand that they love to fly. Uh, we've told people about how to identify them. Uh, but I'm wondering, whenever we're talking about an invasive species coming into an ecosystem that uh, is not native uh, to supporting them, is there a threat to, to the local ecosystem? Yeah, there actually is. You know, we've done uh, several spider surveys over the last couple of years where we looked at all the different types of spiders of this group, these orb weavers. And what we found is where you've got really, really high populations of Joro spiders, you don't find a lot of other spiders like that. So it's almost like they pushed everything out. And then as you get away from that really high population, you start to see a lot of native ones again. So what does this mean long term? I mean, these are questions that take years and years and years to answer. But we do know that where there's high populations of Joros, you have much lower populations of the native spiders for sure. And in terms of the flying, uh, it's a little misleading because what they do is when they're really young, right after they hatch, they're maybe the size of a sesame seed. Some of them will sort of let some silk go and they will be carried away by the wind. So it's not they're so more much like flying, paratroopers. It's floating. Right. <laughs> yeah, paratroopers, right. They have no control over where they go, right? So they're just as likely to land somewhere great as they are to land in the middle of a lake. So this happens early spring, happens over your heads, it happens every year and nobody ever notices. So uh, when, let's go back to the invasive part because mm -hmm. last time New Yorkers uh, were warned about an invasive insect species, it, were, it was lanternflies, which kind of similar to the Joro spider are really stunning to look at. And, and we were all told that we should kill them on site. Should we do the same thing with Joro, Joro spiders? It's a little different with lanternflies. There's a really good documented negative impact in agriculture for lanternflies. You know, at this point, there's no economic impact documented for Joro spiders. I always tell people, look, if it sparks joy and you want to kill them, go ahead. <laughs> it's probably not going to do anything to the overall population. Uh, in places where their populations are really high, yeah, they're really annoying because they get on everything, your deck, your carport, your, your porch. So they, they can be very pestiferous and they're not hard to kill. They're very soft bodied. So anything you might do to another soft bodied bug is going to work on these. Well, David, I just have one last question because I was always taught that you shouldn't kill spiders because they help to control other insects uh, populations, especially mosquitoes. And so if you don't want to be bit by mosquitoes, it's good to have spiders around. Is that true in this case? Well, in this case, if you were to kill the Joro spiders, those native ones would probably come back. So either way, there's going to be a spider there. Think of it that way. All right. Spiders like good locations, right? So it's either these or it's either the native ones. And I, I subscribe to the thought that the native stuff is always going to be better than the invasive. Thank you so much, David Coyle. I know everybody's really interested in this subject. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.